All right, we're now live uh, from our studio. Uh, Facebook made us do about 27 steps to get live. I hope everybody's doing well. Um, the um, I'm sure wherever you are, it's warm. I saw Las Vegas 115. I was once in Las Vegas at 108. I couldn't walk 10 feet. It was unbelievable. They've had 115. Um, you know, we ran courses there for many years in June, and it would be 95. The truth is, 95 to 100 in Las Vegas is really about 90 in Baltimore with the lack of humidity. But um, that's really um, that is the way it is. But anyway, so hope everyone's doing well. We're in the mid portion or getting to the mid portion of June, and this talks on the small bowel obstruction. I was giving some quiz quizzes yesterday. And you know we have the new fellows, and so I like to cover things like, and showcases and quiz faculty, on things that are both practical and unusual to kind of mix things up. But one of the things I spoke about or showed cases on was small bowel obstruction. I think um, all of us from the ER setting, the hospital, outpatient, see lots of cases and rule out small bowel obstruction. So what are you looking for? Well, you're looking for the small bowel being dilated, which typically means above 2.5 centimeters. We look for wall thickening, um, typically greater than three millimeters. When we look at small bowel obstruction, we look at where the obstruction or suspected dilatation and where transitions are. There's a range of reasons for small bowel obstruction. You could have adhesions. A patient had appendectomy 20 years ago. Now it's a distal bowel obstruction. Uh, you can have a tumor obstructing bowel you can have an internal hernia with a volvulus. You could have uh, a hernia through the abdominal wall we mentioned, but it goes on and on. So there's really a million different things. So first thing to do is, is there obstruction present? Yes or no? If there is obstruction, where is it? And then why is it? And one thing I showed yesterday, was published 22 years ago, was the CT feces sign which, which it, what it looks like is you have stool in the small bowel up to a certain point and it stops. That's usually the transition point, can be adhesions, can be a number of different things. Uh, this small bowel feces sign is, is not specific for obstruction. You can see it in things with malabsorption like sprue, whipples, um, patients with cystic fibrosis. But it is a really good sign because when I see it, I know the patient probably has obstruction and it helps me figure out where the transition is. There is the question, if you see a feces sign, is there any way that's related to ischemia? Uh, if you have a feces sign, is it more likely ischemia or not? It really doesn't uh, help you any. Um, I would say most of the time I see a feces sign, I know there's obstruction, but it's not ischemia. But that's just off the top of my head, but, and I was thinking about that yesterday, but. I, I don't have specific numbers, but I have read um, simply that um, uh, you know that that's really where you, where you need to be looking. Uh, okay, so that's important. Now, the other thing about small bowel obstruction you have to worry about is always ischemia. So, every case we need to look at the mesenteric vessels, celiac, SMA, and its branches, particularly when you're talking about uh, potential for a bowel obstruction. You want to look if there's any twists, and that's the thing you think about with internal hernias or volvulus. So you want to look very carefully at the vessels. Coronal views become very important. Sagittal views become very important. I was looking at a case today, really nice sagittal views where the celiac and SMA were extremely tiny. Um, and that's a case of a patient who has a bowel obstruction, but it was really ischemic bowel. The patient had, uh, had an arrest and had poor perfusion. So, looking at vessels for twists, looking for flow, looking for occlusion of SMA or celiac or any of the branches that can lead to ischemia. Again, things like volvulus, internal hernia can lead to ischemia. Twisting of bowel is the, and twisting of vessels, is the vessels in the right location. All of those questions you really do want an answer. We also look for pneumatosis. Pneumatosis can be infarcted bowel. You can see benign pneumatosis patients on steroids, for example. But when you see pneumatosis, you always have to be concerned. You look for the presence of portal venous gas. Um, 
we had this case yesterday at conference with portal venous gas, impressive pneumatosis, and it was due to appendicitis, a gangrenous appendicitis, and the patient did great. You look at the portal venous air, it's high morbidity, high mortality, massive pneumatosis, but I don't know somehow that appendicitis with perforation led to ischemia, led to this pneumatosis, but the bowel was not ischemic. The surgeon was there, it looked great at surgery, the patient's lactate really hadn't moved upward, and the patient was discharged, I think, just about 36 hours later. So uh, sometimes we look at things and it's concerning to us, and it needs to be concerning, but from the patient's perspective, it works out very, very well. So that, that part's really good. Um, and so other things to think about is how you look at the images. So obviously you're looking at axials and you're looking for transition. You need to look at coronals and sagittals. Sagittals are best for the vessels. Coronals are best for looking at bowel and following it. Looking for transitions, looking for hernias. All of that works very nice on the patient's coronal set of images. So that's very important. Now let's see, I'm just looking down here because I'm speaking, I could see the list and uh, Hassan Kabiri from Norway and Lidiana from NYC. Hi, Lidiana. And John Biakino from home. Hey, John, they told me the printer was broken. No one told me till, I don't know, anyway. So I hope John's doing well at home. Uh, but those are kind of the main things in terms of small bowel obstruction. Again, presence of obstruction, where the transition point is, and what's the cause. That's what we need to do, that's what the clinicians expect us to do, and that's the information we provide. There were a couple lectures on CTS Us, on small bowel obstruction that are worthwhile listening to, I think. That would be very helpful with lots of case examples. There's also lots of cases on CTS Us in the small bowel section. So that can be very helpful to you as well. And also you wanna look maybe in the uh, vascular section where we show a lot of the mesenteric vessels and vessel abnormalities. So with that, I will wish everybody, oh, it's 7-Eleven today. And I'm told, not that I know for sure, but if you go to 7-Eleven, you get a free Slurpee. Now, I don't know if that's urban legend or not, but my grandkids, Max and Sam, we're going to 7-Eleven this morning before camp. So they will let me know if they got a free Slurpee or they had to pay for it. Now, of course, at their age levels, they're not paying anyway, so they would not know free or not free, but I guess they would know it's free or not free because there probably would have been 10 million other people waiting online for those Slurpees. Never a big Slurpee fan. Anyway, hope everyone has a great day. Bye.